I've got the new travel tripod from Peak Designs here and good job Peak Designs. Not necessarily on designing the best tripod on earth, but making everybody talk like maybe you have. So in this short video, I just want to give you a couple of things that I love about this tripod and a few that I don't love. And this video is not sponsored by Peak Designs, though they did loan me this tripod for the purposes of this review. All right, first thing that I want to talk about that I like about this tripod is its small, compact nature. In this hand, I have the Peak Designs tripod. In this hand, I have a normal or actually slightly larger size hydro flask, and they're not that much different in size, especially when you look at it from this angle. This compacts down so nice in size. Eli, catch this. Thank you. That it really is impressive. There's no wasted space in here, and that's one of the things that they're really talking up and that you can really see. There is a small center column, but it all fits so nicely that it isn't any wider than that water bottle or even a Coke can. That means that any of your backpack pockets suddenly become a tripod pocket. That's nice. Now, most of my camera bags have a tripod pocket, so I don't need it to be that small, but it is very lightweight. The carbon fiber version coming in at 2.8 pounds. Nice job, Peak Design. Another feature that I like is despite its small size and compact nature, it still is really quick to set up. There's no funky unfolding, really. You just got these little flip locks, which I personally prefer the twist locks myself, but these are quick and they feel sturdy enough that they're going to last even in colder weather which is a concern when i travel you can do all four at once you could actually do multiple legs at once and then work your way back up rumor has it somebody at peak designs has completely set this tripod up set a camera on it in under 10 seconds so yeah that's a good job too hang on a second how much faster is it really a few youtubers made a big deal about the clunky, slow setup of traditional tripods. So I put it to the test. Me versus me. Flip lock versus twist lock. Well, it looks like the Peak Design wins, but not quite. As you'll see in a moment, the head is not ready to be used. To use it, you have to raise it on the center column using this slim little dial right here. It goes in, a little magnet holds it tightly in place, and you pull it out to easily use it. You can use it when it's in there as well. It's just harder to get your fingers around it. Even when it's out, I worry a bit about situations where you're wearing gloves and getting your fingers around that. I'm not as concerned for the fact that you have to have the center column raised. There are some issues, a lot of you wrote me and said, how stable can it be if you always have to have the center column up? And well, honestly, it's pretty stable. This column, it's little kind of octahedral design, it feels quite stable and does not slide down when I put a lot of weight on it, even when you've locked this down nice and tight. All right. But the fact that you do have to put it up in the first place, well, it's a little annoying. Now, to use this as a ball head, you've got this one tension ring right here. And you tighten it up, doesn't move. You loosen it, and it becomes nice and loose, and it can go down into those portrait orientations in a couple different angles, and of course, spin around. Above that is a little locking mechanism to clip in with your camera. So let's tighten this for a second. We'll throw a camera in here, Sony a7R 3 with the 100 to 400, and it clips in nicely. I'm not using one of the Peak Design clips. I'm using just a standard Arca Swiss plate. It does work fairly nicely. And I can then move that back, and now the quick release is locked, and this camera is locked in there nicely. You can see that I can still pretty easily move the ball head around, and when I let go, it stays in place. I can loosen it, and of course, 
tighten it and really crank it down. Even when it's really cranked down, you can still move it. Something that I don't traditionally find as easy to do with other ball heads. But that doesn't mean it's not stable. It's just always gonna move on you if you're touching it. Shooting long exposures, you shouldn't be touching your camera anyway. But the fact that, again, I shoot in colder environments, at least a couple months out of the year. And thinking about wearing gloves, it feels very easy to move both of these, the tension ring and the little quick release lock at the same time, accidentally making it easy to pop that out. I don't think it is a huge deal. It's something that you probably can get careful about and make sure you only work at the bottom of this. But when you pay this much for a tripod, it feels like those kind of things should be really well thought out and never an issue at all. Now, I will also say that the head in general just doesn't feel like it's got the fit and finish that the rest of the tripod does. It's just a little loose, a little wiggly, and again, just a little plasticky, really. This is metal, but these dials down here are plastic. And I don't love that when you pay this much for a tripod. Okay, and each leg is independently adjustable angle-wise. Two different spots to catch, your traditional and then a very low angle. Now, this tripod will set up super low to the ground, but interestingly enough, you actually have to use a hex tool to configure it in that manner. It's not as quick to set up as some other tripods are in that low to the ground. And it will do reverse angle shots as well. You don't need a tool for that. Underneath the center column is a small hook for hanging a backpack to add extra stability to a tripod that feels pretty stable in general. And even though that hook is small, it feels sturdy enough. Hidden underneath that hook is a tiny little cell phone holder which clips automatically into the headpiece. That's neat, but maybe a little gimmicky. I don't know how often I would use. All right, I think I told you everything that I want to about this Peak Design Travel Tripod. I mean, it is impressively compact and lightweight, but you pay for that, both in kind of this unique design up here that I don't love and also literally pay for it in the fact that the carbon fiber is 500 on Kickstarter and they say it will be 600 after the Kickstarter is over and you walk into the store. That's an awful lot of money and it really makes it hard to happily recommend this unless you really need this small and this compact of a tripod. Two other tripods that I think you should really compare this to. They're not as small and lightweight, but they save you a lot of money, and they are pretty small and pretty lightweight. The first up is one I've been testing for a week now. It's the Leo Photo Carbon Fiber. It gets just as tall, doesn't pack down quite as small, weighs just three pounds though, so about a quarter of the pound more than this. And another option is the Mi Photo Carbon Fiber Road Trip. I've been using that one personally for over three years, and I've been pretty happy with it. Also about three pounds, and again, roughly the same size at the full weight. But both of those are more normal with your traditional ball heads and easy ball head options. I will say that they add on an additional option to put your own ball head on top, but of course then you don't have this as, it's not as compact and lightweight. So overall in the comments, I'd love for you to let me know are you interested in this? My recent Instagram poll, most of you said pass. It's just too costly. But there are quite a few of you interested, clearly, by how well this Kickstarter is doing. I've got links to all of the tripods I've mentioned, as well as Peak Design's Kickstarter link right down below this video. And if you appreciated this look at the Peak Design Travel Tripod, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.